All right, praise the Lord. Welcome back to the Pentecostal Apocalypse. I'm Gary Bailey, uh, and again, I'm with uh, Pastor Bob Palmer. Praise God, good friend of mine. He's just sharing about how he received Jesus Christ. The Lord uh, saved him and delivered him, set him free from cancer, and uh, made him a new man. Absolutely. Left that old man in the hospital bed. And rose up a new creation. Rose up a new creation. Absolutely. And you got on fire. You, I mean, you oh, literally, you just got on fire. Hungry for God. Oh, uh, you know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, Blessed are those who do hunger and thirst yeah. after righteousness. The little word do means it's ongoing. We don't yeah. stop hungry. We keep yeah. hungering. We keep thirsting for him. You know, we're Amen. righteous. We're made righteous. But we don't stop there. I want more. I never get tired of talking about the things of God, Pastor never. Bob. Uh, never. There's a scripture in Malachi that says there's a book written about people like you and me talking about the things of God, those that, that uh, discuss and talk of the things of, uh, of God. Uh, God's interested in people that are interested in Him, I think. Yeah, yeah. I believe that. You were telling that you got saved and you started some prayer meetings and uh, you then got involved I got, with a group called the Full Gospel Businessmen. Well, I got invited to this meeting and I didn't know what they were all about. Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International. And so I, I thought, well, I don't know. I was somewhat of an introvert and a loner kind of a person and now I'm going to go to a meeting with other uh, men and Sit there, and what do I, what do I do? Yeah. So I went, and uh, I found out I I didn't have to do nothing but listen, hmm. and I listened to them share their testimony of how Jesus became real to them, and that there was more, hmm. and I can still remember one of the businessmen saying, he's quoting from from John, the Epistle of John. Beloved, I wish above all things you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul would prosper. Wow. And I said, is that in the Bible? I hadn't read that part yet. <laughs> is that in the Bible? Uh, God wants us to prosper. He wants us to have success. Wow. And he said, oh, yeah, that's in the Bible. I said, can you find that for me? I want that. What a tremendous revelation that is because a lot of people, even Christians, they look at things, things happen in their life, and they well, I guess God wanted me to lose my business. I guess suffer. Yeah, God wanted me to suffer, or you know, cause the problems with my chil children or, or my life. And God has nothing to do with those yeah. things. Yeah. And so I heard these testimonies, and then I said, oh, "Hold it! You you also got something I don't have yet. What is that that you have?" And he says, well, it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Don't you have that? I said, well, not yet. How do I get it? <laughs> Is it a part of being a member of this club or what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he says, well, it's really quite simple. I said, really? Yeah, it's quite simple. And so they said, come back next month. And we'll tell you some more. Yeah. I got to wait a whole month for this? A whole month? And so the next thing I know, I'm asking and seeking and knocking and yeah. hungering, looking and searching for what they've got. They've got mm. something and I want it, you know. Praise God. And so uh, one of my f new friends, his name was Emmanuel Buddha, big fella. And he w would sing. And he would had this voice from deep down on the inside singing about Jesus, his eyes is on the sparrow and some songs like that. And he would just bring the presence of God when he was saying, and he says, I'm going to be preaching over in this uh, little full gospel uh, church over there in uh, Laporte, Indiana. You mm. want to come? I says, I sure do. And he was telling me a little bit about being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. And I says, I, I, I would like to, go to this meeting. And so he says, well, you come on and you can ride with me. So I'm riding with him to this meeting and he's up there and he's preaching the word of God and he's sharing, you know, the place is just 
a little small place, but it's packed with yeah. people. But full, there's standing room only in this wow. place. And I'm sitting there in the back, uh, the back row of this little church, Pentecostal church, and, and he gives this altar call. And I said to myself, I can't wait. And I stepped on people's toes and everything else to get up there to the front. <laughs> now, I, I said earlier. We're talking about hunger and thirst. I was hungry. <laughs> and he was a big old fella. Big, yeah. I mean, he was probably 300 and some pounds. Oh, big my. old fella. Emmanuel Buddha. And uh, uh, I'm running up to him. And he's running toward me. And we ran into each other. And I fell down on the floor. <laughs> I was not slain in the spirit. I was knocked over. Uh, it's like a linebacker <laughs> meeting a run, a 120 pound running back. Huh? And he fell on top of me. Oh my goodness. And I started speaking in tongues. Oh my goodness. And I don't think you ever told me that story, I, Bob. I never heard that I before. Am speaking in tongues. And my sister in law, who was in the back of the room, who knew nothing about this, did not know what was going on, yeah. never heard of speaking in tongues before. She's back there and she's crying and saying, doesn't somebody want to help Bob? Look, at he's just got squashed, and now he's making these strange noises. Somebody help him. Somebody yeah. help him. Somebody uh, call an ambulance or something. <laughs> and I'm having a glorious time speaking in another language, <laughs> laying on the floor, <laughs> sounding like a Navajo Indian or oh a Rabajo or something, you know. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it was an awesome, awesome service, and and went home that night and next morning I'm riding in my car with my son and I started speaking in the tongues again and just glorifying the Lord. And then my son says, oh, you're going to do that again, are you? I said, I guess I will. I guess I will. I guess I will. Yeah. And it just never stops. Yeah. Praise God. Flowing. Well, I never get tired of hearing how people come to come to Jesus, how they get filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. To me, you know, the greatest thing that ever happened to me was getting saved. I got saved as a eight year old boy, went forward in a Rex Humbard meeting. A, a neighbor girl, she I was a little shy, you know. This is huge church we were in and uh uh a little neighbor girl, she got up when the altar call came. She got up and went down there. I thought, well, bless God, if she can do it, I can do it. Amen. And I went down to that altar, and I can remember afterwards in a counseling room, just tears flowing out of my face and just realizing I'm forgiven and I'm saved and I've become a new creature. And, and uh, then later on, I uh, uh, got water baptized in the Church of the Brethren. They called us dunkards three times forward, you know, in <laughs> the Church of the Brethren. I never did get baptized again. It stuck. That was a good baptism. Yeah. Uh, but that was just an outward sign of what happens on the inside of what. Absolutely. Uh, but then later on, a couple, uh, well, about a year later, I got filled with the Holy Ghost, spoke with other tongues, and I've never looked back. The two, uh, I'd have to say the two most important things that ever happened in my life was getting saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And, yes. and I'd say to any believer, if... Uh, if you're saved, the next thing on your agenda is get filled with the Holy Ghost. And if you're already filled, then get refilled and stay filled with yeah. the Holy Ghost. Uh, but we need this Pentecostal experience. Absolutely. Uh, we need power to live this Christian life, Absolutely. Pastor Bob. I mean, uh, thank God uh, that God gives everything we need, not just to get through life, barely get along, but to get through life victorious and yeah. overcoming and successful in life. Uh, uh, now, we may get into it in the next session a little more, but you were a businessman, a contractor, and, and as you went into business, uh, God uh, gave you a lot of ideas on how to well, do things. I remember yeah. you telling me about bridges you built and things really beyond your skill level. Yes. But the Lord really shows you how to he showed you how to do that and and i think uh, you can share maybe in the next session we'll share a little more but uh you uh you build up millions of dollars worth of equipment uh or a couple of hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment and you eventually sold all that to just go preaching around the world sold and give away yeah yeah, and I know you told me you've been to Indonesia 25 times, and how many other nations have you been to? Altogether, 45. 45 nations, yes. praise God. 
Well, that's exciting. You got me beat by about 35. So uh, I've been to about 11 nations. But, uh, man, I, I, uh, I'm just excited about what, uh, what we're going to talk about next. So um, you guys stay tuned because uh, I know you're going to enjoy what's, uh, what's coming up next. We maybe talk uh, <coughs> to a little bit uh, maybe in the next session about uh, maybe some challenges you've had or setbacks you've had because you've you pastored a church of several uh, several hundred people, a thousand people. You've uh, traveled the world preaching the gospel, but that that hadn't been without setbacks. I know it hadn't yeah. been without the devil, but we don't want to glorify that or magnify that, but thing about it is even though we have obstacles and we can we have setbacks uh we can still move we on into victory and game. have uh, total victory we shall see so uh, praise god let's uh we we'll end this session and we'll uh, we'll talk a little more about uh, some of those things he's okay. coming in power hail the blessed hour we shall see the king when he comes